it's Gianna. This video is going to be a little bit more intense than what I was doing before. This video is the story of my Disneyland college program, which has a lot of drama, roommate drama, how I ended up on shift having to leave and go to Anaheim PD for two hours, how I ended up terming from my college program and what that was like. I'm just gonna start. I applied for the Disneyland College program five times before I got in. That college program takes very few people into housing. I hear about 250. It's a very large application pool and a very small chance of getting in. So I worked really hard and when I finally got in, I was so excited but I was also a little nervous because Disneyland is so different than Disney World. I decided that I was going to do my program and I paid my fees the whole time before I left. I was like, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? I spent all this money, so I have to do it. I had a boyfriend at the time that I was seeing and I was sad to leave him. I was sad to leave my family because I had just come home from my Disney World college program one semester before. I was kind of just settling back into things and now I was gonna leave again all the way to California. I was already on uneven turf before I even started my program. I met my roommates through the Facebook page. I decided that I wanted to do that rather than go with random roommates because that's what I was more comfortable with. I met two really, really good friends. I'm gonna keep everybody's name out of this because that's respectful. We picked two others as well. That's where our story begins. We lived in a two bedroom in Carnegie. One bedroom had two beds in it and the other bedroom had three beds in it. Bunk bed and a normal bed. I was in the room with one other bed. Across the apartment, the rest of my roommates lived in another room. In the beginning, things were good for probably the first month. As time went on, she was working parking and I was working retail. So she worked very early mornings and I worked very late nights. She would wake up early in the morning and leave for work. I would leave when she was coming home and get home at one or two usually in the morning. She was very sensitive to light, almost so much so that it was hard for her to live with another person because when I would come home and try and get into bed at two in the morning, I would put my flashlight on to walk the three steps to my bed and she would get really upset with me. And then one night I was watching a movie on my computer in my room with my headphones in and the lights off at 9.30. There was half an hour left of the movie when my roommate came in and said she was going to bed and that I needed to leave the room. And I asked her why I needed to leave, what was bothering her, and she said that my computer was too bright. So I turned the brightness all the way down. I'm in bed, I'm comfortable, I'm just gonna stay here, the movie's almost over. And she got very upset trying to tell me that the apple on the back of my computer was glowing too brightly for her. She left the room, my movie ended, and I put my computer down and I went to sleep. The next morning, she had texted me saying she was very upset that I didn't do what she had asked her to do and some text messages were exchanged and she blocked my number. That night when I came home, I tried to confront her about it and ask her, what can we do? Cause we have five more months that we have to live together and I don't want to live in a hostel environment. She didn't want anything to do with me. She did not want to talk to me at all. She kept saying, I'm very upset with you. I don't want to talk to you. And then she took her things and went to the living room. I kept asking her what the issue was. I couldn't really see why she was so upset over me watching a movie in my own bed. She left the apartment. So at that point I knew I needed to go to housing because I wasn't going to live like this. I didn't apply five times to this program to come and have a bad time because of my roommate. A few days had passed. She still had my number blocked. I went out of housing, I explained my situation, and I just said, can I move? Because I don't wanna be in a room where I'm feeling uncomfortable. The housing girl told me that I could not move because there were no beds left. I would have to try and talk to my roommate. These were the steps I was given. I had to text my roommate. If she didn't respond back to me in 24 hours, she would be pulled for a mandatory meeting. I texted her and she had my number blocked, so she never answered. Well, a week later, we had our mandatory meeting before I went into work. We went into the meeting. Nothing was really resolved because the only issue we were having was that my roommate was unhappy with the light that I was using to get to bed, which the housing woman explained is a safety issue and that I needed a light to get to bed. She told my roommate if she was really that sensitive. She should sleep with the sheets over her face. That was it. I left the meeting and my roommate didn't talk to me again for a month. We didn't talk to each other. There was zero communication. 
So it was really uncomfortable for me to be in my room because I hated not knowing when she was going to be home and seeing her and having it be really awkward between us. So we avoided each other for a month. In that month, a lot of things happened. One of the things was very scary and it changed my view of my safety in the college program, in California in general. So here's the story. Let me talk a little bit about my work locations. So I was working in New Orleans and Critter Country stores. New Orleans stores are the stores that are at the end of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. We have a cart over by Haunted Mansion. They're very small stores. You work two, three people at a time in each store and there's three or four of them. And then we have two carts. So the only time I was ever alone was when I was working at a cart. This particular night I get the task of being out on a cart which was right outside my store. I was working out there and it was right before fireworks and it was pretty dead back in my area. And a woman came up to me who was pretty and looked like she was my age. She looked like she could have been my friend or somebody that I knew. I never really thought anything of her. She struck up a conversation with me. She told me she had just moved to California and that she was doing a post-grad program. I was like, oh, I just moved here too and I'm doing an internship and totally giving out information about myself, which I know is not the smartest, but again, I never suspected anything and when you're in Disneyland, you kind of feel safe around people. I was talking to this woman for about half an hour. She was trying on ears. She said, can I have your number? And she handed me her phone like this and I said, sure. I put my number in her phone and immediately she switched gears to like a different person and she started asking me all these questions like are you married do you have a husband do you plan on getting married do you have children have you ever been to saudi arabia like rapid fire and i was kind of caught off guard but i still wasn't that concerned at this point then her mom came by she was very quiet the girl who i was talking with said this is my mom mom this is gianna isn't she so beautiful? She kept saying, isn't she so beautiful? The mom didn't say a word to me. She just took out her phone and she got right in my face and she started taking a bunch of pictures of my face, of my body. She backed up, started taking pictures and then she was going around me. In the meantime, a woman came up to buy popcorn from my cart and the mom and her daughter said, oh, and my hair was like this. And she said, oh, what was your name again? And moved my hair off of my chest to read my name tag which says my hometown and my name on it and she took a picture they said it was so nice meeting you and she kissed me on both cheeks and she was like i'll see you soon bye and got out of there the woman who was buying popcorn came up to me and said did you know those people and i said no and she said i'm a mom that wasn't safe you need to call security because they were taking pictures of you and i have a very uneasy feeling about this whole thing. And I started to get worried because I just moved to this town all by myself. I don't know anybody. I take public transportation to work and home from work at odd hours. Said to me, on, I called my lead on the phone and I told her what had happened and she said, I can't believe you gave somebody that you didn't know your phone number. And then I started getting really nervous and I got like prickly feeling and I was like, I'm scared. Things only got worse from there. My manager came over to take over my cart and she said, you need to call security. I called security and a security guard came over and he said, tell me the whole story. And I told him the same story I just told you. And the whole time he kept saying, oh, 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 no. oh gosh, no, no. Oh my gosh. He took out his walkie talkie and he started giving a description of the two women to every other security guard in Disney to see if they could find them. He said, we need to walk across Main Street right now and we need to go to Anaheim PD. And everything started happening so fast. He said, as soon as we get off stage, you need to delete your Facebook. You need to change your phone number. And then I started crying. <laughs> I was like, the tears just started flowing and we're walking across Main Street. It was so busy. There were so many people going each way and I was like linked arms with this guy and I was like, if somebody snatches me up, you're gonna make it your life work to find me, right? And he's like, I have a black belt. And I was like, I'm gonna die today. This is, this is it for me. We get to Anaheim PD. I sit down with an amazing officer and I tell him everything that happened. He has me write out a statement. He has me change my phone number right there. I deleted my Facebook because he was like, what information did you give her? And then he typed it into Google and he found everything on me immediately. My high school, my first, last, middle name, my address for home, my address where I lived in California, literally everything you can find on me that woman could have found in two seconds. 
He told me that it could have been two things. It could have been that they were looking at me for a potential victim for sex trafficking, or they were looking at me for a potential victim for identity theft. So both of those are not good options. I was so scared and my mom was texting me saying, I'm coming to get you, you're leaving Anaheim. This isn't gonna happen anymore because I'm sick of hearing about your awful roommate situation and now your safety has been compromised and I had to walk the police back to my work location, show them where I was and he kept saying when I was sitting in the police station, what's your mom's number? Just in case you show up missing. What's your mom's address? just in case you show up missing. I feel like my whole life changed at that moment and I saw a different side of people. I tell my story so much because thank goodness nothing happened to me and it wasn't that big of a deal, but it could happen to anybody and it's something as easy as making a friend and giving her your phone number that can do you in. Be really careful with who you share any information with. I know people tell you this from when you're in kindergarten on, Oh, be careful, don't give your number to people. But it's so true. And take your personal information off of the internet. Delete it. And I had to get a police escort home that night and security walked me all the way to my room in the building. After that, I was kind of spooked to do anything. And it took me a little while to be comfortable on public transportation again because I was always looking over my shoulder thinking, oh my gosh, if this girl found me or if she Googled me before I deleted my information, what does she know and where is she? So after a little while of fighting with my roommate and after I got the sex trafficking scare, I was missing my family. I was missing my boyfriend at the time. I was not happy and I kept thinking, I've never quit anything in my life. I'm so unhappy right now. I feel like I should just do it. Like I should just term. I went into the program's office and I did try one last time to move out of my room and they did say that there were no beds available. I went ahead and decided that I was going to term. I emailed housing and I explained to them my situation. They let me know that I would have to pay the rest of my housing fees, which ended up being $1,800. Before I could move out, I had to pay them that amount. And then I had to clean out all of my things and be out basically whenever I wanted, I could go. So in the Disneyland college program, you have to put in your two weeks at work separately or quit your job separately. I put in my two weeks at work before I decided to term because I did want to have good standing with the company because I do love Disney and I would love to work for them again. On my very last day in New Orleans Square, Johnny Depp came to do a promotional shoot for the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. It was the most fun day at work I had ever had. So Johnny was in our backstage area, fully dressed as Jack Sparrow, but he actually went on the ride and stood in for his animatronic. People were coming off the boats into our store then and they were crying and they were like, that's not Johnny Depp in there, that's not actually him. And we're like, no, it really is him, he's really in there. And it was so exciting to see people's reactions. And there were little kids that were so stoked. People were coming off of the ride with these videos like Johnny Depp is right in there right now. It was really cool. I kept begging my lead. I was like, please, it's my last night. Let me go on the ride, let me go on the ride. And he kept telling me no, that we're understaffed. Johnny came out of the doors of the Dream Suite in New Orleans Square. My lead was like, go, go, I'll cover for you, go. So I got to run out there. Johnny Depp came out, everybody was screaming. It was so cool to see him as Jack Sparrow. So I had the best last night there. And I was really glad that my program ended on such a high note. The very last thing that happened between my roommate and I <laughs> was after I had put in my two weeks at work, there was a mid-program celebration in California Adventure. They shut down the boardwalk for us and the college program kids got to have a party there. It was so much fun. I went with my work friend. I was sitting next to my friend Xavier and there were two people next to him and I heard some girl like talking mad smack about somebody and I'm like, oh, like what is going on over here? And I'm listening and it's my roommate talking bad about me. And I'm like, you haven't talked to me in a month and you're out here talking to other girls saying bad things about me. At this point, I'm so happy that I termed. I'm so glad that I'm leaving this negative space and that I get to go home and be happy again. I think that terming was ultimately the right choice for me and I'm really glad I did it. I never had any regrets about it. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.